demo day in Tokyo. This is actually the biggest demo day where we've ever had in Tokyo. So tonight we have 23 students, six projects. It's the very, very first time that we have six projects to present to you here in Tokyo. We are extremely happy to welcome you tonight. I wonder how many of you never heard about Wagon or don't know much. I don't believe you guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're former students. <laughs> okay, I guess everyone knows about it. That's insane, actually. Um, but for those of you who don't, I'm still going to explain what we do. Um, so our 23 students went, to, went through nine weeks of intense coding from 9 in the morning to 7 in the evening every single day. Some of them were complete beginners. You need to keep that in mind when you look at the projects that they have been able to deliver in just 9 weeks of coding. Some of them were complete beginners. And after today, they are going to become web developer, some of them entrepreneurs, some of them freelancer. Some of them are going to stay in Japan, others are going to go back to their, to their countries. Tonight we have 23 students and 15 nationalities. So we have people coming from all over the world. Um, I don't think I have much more to say to you before we start the presentation. I guess you're all eager to see what they have for you. Uh, I guess Momoko, are you ready? Re ready? Okay. Do we have some travelers in the room? I guess everyone travels a bit. Yeah, we have some travelers. I guess you're going to love the project that we have. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Momo on stage with Destination Masher. So let me say that again. Hello everyone! Hello! Good. My name is Momoko and here with me we have Kemal, hello, Amanda, and Ricardo. Please say hello to them. Hello! <laughs> and today we would like to introduce you to our awesome app called Destination Matcher. But before I begin, let me ask you two questions. Who likes traveling? Good. Who likes traveling overseas? Good. You are my best friend now. Because I love traveling too. Whenever I have time and money, I always want to travel more. Five years ago, one day, my boss suddenly came up to me and said, Momoko, why don't you take a week of vacation? Two days later, I was like, what? I was happy and shocked at the same time, but I didn't have time. I had only one day to plan, and I ended up going to Chiba instead of visiting Vietnam, South America, or California. So since then, I've been wondering, hmm, would it be nice if there is a website where I can search by budget and have all the information, such as flights, accommodations, and other information in one page comes to me instead of me spending my time visiting many websites. And here, Destination Matcher is my answer to that. Ooh. With Destination Matcher, you can search by budget, region, and dates. And total budget includes meals, flights, and accommodations. So, let's give it a try. Who wants to travel? Uh, come on. <laughs> so, here. What's your name? John. John, nice to meet you. So, which region would you like to go? Um, why don't we try... We have um, many regions. Why don't we try Eastern Europe? It's not Europe. Okay, and your total budget would be? Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. <laughs> Realistic. <laughs> Very realistic, yeah. And departure date? Yeah. Any date? Yeah. Okay, why don't we leave on the 12th and come back on the 19th? Yeah, yeah. Later, yeah. Reasonable? Okay, let's search. 
So, John, why did you pick Eastern Europe? Um, <laughs> just going to find a girlfriend, right? <laughs>
we got eight pieces of important information that helps you decide. Isn't that awesome? Yeah! Yay! <laughs> so imagine, five years ago, if I had destination matcher, maybe I could have gone to Chile instead of Chiba. <laughs> Chile, Chiba. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, now I and you both have destination matcher. So if your boss surprises you with a week of vacation, you now know what to do, right? Thank you very much. My name is Momoko Toyoda and we have Kemal, Ricardo and Amanda of Destination Matcha. Thank you. Very much. I think she deserves another round of applause. She's much better than me. For warming up the room. Okay. Um, the other presentation are going to be really uh, Wi-Fi heavy. So if you guys can disconnect from the Wi-Fi, please. That's why I was so do that. Um, cool. Do we have any questions? That's always the toughest part. Yes. Uh, there is a website where you can get this kind of information, and the source is here, safe around. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually a low number. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's why it's 31 for a week. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. yes. Can you change, uh, so you'll be looking at the cheapest flights and hostels, but it's a long distance from the central city? Now we don't have that functionality because it was a short-term project, but for the future we're going to consider adding that function. I think we have time for one more question. Yes. You raise your hand first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right now you are finding the cheapest trip, right? Right. But not one that's close to its budget. No. Do you have anything, like what made you choose the cheapest flight instead of something that matches his budget? Uh, the reason we are choosing the cheapest flights is we are afraid to, we, we are afraid that we're not going to have any results. Right. But maybe in the future we're going to add another function where you can search based on the hotel rank mm. or reviews, yeah, so that you have more options. Alright, I thought of other hands. Yeah, go ahead. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would like to know which uh, API you use for looking up what the uh, flight. Uh, for, the, for, the for the flight, we yeah. used Skyscanner API, and for the hotel, we couldn't find the API for the hotel, so we are scraping timely. Oh. Yeah. And I did the scraping, I think. Came out in the background. Yeah. Came out in the API for the sky scanner. Cool. Thank you very much. That was it. <laughs> Our next presentation is called Project Product. It's called Lama. And when you are going to see the project uh, afterwards, I want you guys to tell me why Lama, because I personally have absolutely no idea. Are you ready, Sam? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Welcome, Sam, for Lama. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. All right, so we 
are Team Lama, and I just want to start by introducing our team. So on the computer over there is our front-end guy, Mike. And then over, oh, yeah. And then we have our back-end guy, of course, is over in the back over there, Jordan. Thank you. And I'm Sam, I'm the product lead and the project manager for Lama. So to kick us, you know, to start, I want to, you know, just get a show of hands who likes to read here, who like readers. Nice, nice, you're all my people. Okay, now, um, I've prepared a few questions for you guys, and you can just, you know, think about yourself, about yourself and just picture it. You don't have to answer me. So, what was that one book that you read that had made an impact on you? That had inspired you? You know, that taught you something important. And where is that book now? And how did you find out about that book? Perhaps someone recommended it to you. So with these questions, or maybe you have the answers in mind, I'm going to introduce you, Lama. And Lama is here to help you build your library and share the inspiring stories. So this is Lama, and this is my book collections, right here. So each book that you see um, plays a very important part in my life. If I have, you know, like, has just seeing it on display really make me feel like I've connected, you know, like, bring me back to a time that I've read it. I take, for example, um, if we go to Pax. So this is a book about a young boy with his fox, and then um, about their departure, and then that, you know, like, over a really long time, they were, they were able to, like, find each other. And it really, like, I just feel, like, strongly about, oh, you know, to, to just do... Uh, to learn how to like respect. Okay. Anyways, um, but if you ask me what was that one book that really holds true to my heart, it has to be The Little Prince. And I actually bought a physical copy of it today. It's right here. Do you want to know about this book? So why is this book important to me is that this book has taught me how to love and how to appreciate the little things in life. And the reason, and then you know, and then I, I, I like carry this book with me everywhere I go. Um, just seeing it, it kind of calms me down, kind of like right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and add this book um, to Lama, so I can have it with me everywhere and anywhere I go, as long as I have internet connection. <laughs> and then the idea of displaying this book in like large to see is because I really believe in that seeing, you know, the cover photo really, you know, connects with you, like, it really, like, you know, by just thinking about the little prince and seeing, like, the cover of it, it really brings you back to the experience that you shared with the book. And then, um, and then, so, now, with all the books that I have, and I'm thinking, how am I going to find the next book that have this connection with me? What? Oh, okay, it seems like, Jordan, can you see that in the middle of something? All right, it seems know. like... Jordan has said, oh, Jordan has sent me something. All right, that's, um, that's really nice, I think, just with good intention, and let's check out what it is. Don't make me think. Oh, wait, wait, oh. It seems like he left me a little note. It will help you to build it into a product, you should give it a try. Um, and the wiki face, a copy afterwards. Okay. <laughs> um, but I just want to know, like, why, why this book? Um, I just, you know, maybe there's something more to it. I want to go, like, check it out. So I see that this book is, you know, to help you build, it, build an intuitive web product and to not make your users think too much. And, but not, that alone is not enough for me to, you know, want to read this book. And I see that it was actually Doug, where's Doug? Doug over there, uh, who have initially, who got shared this book with Jordan. And no offense to Jordan, but, you know, I trust Doug's, you know, design philosophy more. He struck me more as a design guy than Jordan. So that made me feel more secure and want me to read this book more. <laughs> so with that, um, I'm just going to accept this book. It seems like it's worth reading it. And it's going to be on my shelf for now. And if we take a step back, and that's fast forward in time, a week from now. And just I have, you know, I'm halfway through this book, and I really enjoyed it. And that it has you know, taught me something really important about design. And then just at this moment, it came to my attention that Mike over there, hey Mike, and he's been working on multiple projects. And that, I remember he was you know, facing some um, design, like hard design decisions, um, critical decision that he just doesn't know what to do. And I thought to myself, maybe I got something to help him out. 
I'm going to share the book that Jordan has shared with me um, to him. And I'm going to write a little something saying that, hey, Mike, remember um, the project we talked about that we've been struggling with? Take a look at this. <laughs> Take a look at it. Yeah, I'm typing fast. Take a look at this and my help. And so, we continue, so um, this book's journey will continue on. So if you see that with Don't Make Me Think, this book will see that it originated with Doug and it, will, it went to Jordan and now to me. And once Mike accepted it, he will be the next line for the team. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is Lama and we are here to help you um, build the library, to help you hold this book together, to make, remind you of the stories that you have with these books. And it helps you to share the stories that once inspired you with others. Thank you. And um, before the questions, if there are any, I just want to say I really appreciate our teams, Mike and Jordan, for working so hard until the last minute. And with all the, and I want to thank all the TAs and all the audience for giving us the attention. Thank you. Reintroduce your team again. Oh yeah, so uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so that's Mike. So um, all the cool front end stuff. It's all oh, because of him and J Jordan. Jordan. over there. It's all that guy. Cool. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for Sam? Yes. Uh, actually, your site is in English, but can we find also uh, uh, books from different languages? Um, so as of now, um, we have, we build our own database for all of us, and in the future we will like to hook up to different um, APIs, for example, uh, Google Books or Goodreads. So if that's the case, we may be able to. I think we will be able to find books in other languages. So why is it called Llama? <laughs> what do you think? I think you just really really like Llama. <laughs> Actually, there's a story behind this. So um, I was looking for something that would stand out that can anchor the product, and I just find Llama to be somewhat fluffy and very like friendly, down to earth. And yeah, and you know, it's like I can really lean on one when I just sit in my coffee and read a book on a random Sunday afternoon. So that's why. So you do like Llama? I do like Llama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have two questions. If that's okay. First, for you, Mike. Um, did you have any front-end experience before you worked in Llama? Um, not any professional, I just kind of dabbled in JavaScript on my own. And a little bit? A lot of dabbling? Um, if you want to ask like how much time, it's probably just, like a few, like three months maybe. Got it. Okay, that's, that's, that's great work. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Second question. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, <laughs> yeah sorry. How, how are you different from Goodreads? Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, I guess the difference is um, for Goodreads is I use Goodreads too. And for me, Goodreads is a little noisy because um, the community that Goodreads are building is everyone on Goodreads, or just all your Facebook friends, which you don't know, really talk to, and you just see them what they're reading. But with Llama, what, I, what we want to achieve here is um, the community is actually built around the book. That's why there's the journey. Sorry, one more follow-up question. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. What happens if, like, you have this saturation of friends? Like, I have thousands of LinkedIn contacts. I have friends on Facebook. I don't know. I have people on Instagram. I don't know. You're gonna have hopefully the same problem on Llama, right? And then I'm gonna have like 20 book recommendations that I'll never read, and then you suffer the same fate as Goodreads. No. How do you plan to battle this? Um. So let's just rephrase the question. So you're um, asking, will Llama become like Goodreads where you're swamped just by book recommendations? Yes. Okay. So I guess the philosophy now is a friend request in Llama can only happen when you send a book. Right? That's kind of like your outreach. It's like, hey, here's a book. And I guess the social aspect of Llama is, hasn't been built yet. So if you are a user, you know we're friends if you sign up now. Uh, but I guess what we want to try to focus on is to focus on a journey where um, really interesting if we can go into uh, don't make me think and go all the way down. You see that for me, 
um, I can actually see the journey and I can see that, oh, it was Doug who started it. And I can reach out to Doug saying, Doug saying that, hey, you know, like, it was such a great read. And I just love that intimate connection. Mm -hmm. And then where, as this grows, it's like, that's the, that's the, that's the community around this book, this particular book. Thank you. No problem. Good questions. Thank you very much. That was Sam and his team for Lama. So I guess we have a lot of tech savvy people in the room. I guess a lot of you know about agile and things of that nature. And sometimes if some of you have, are parents, you would wish that you could apply agile to your kids. I guess you do. Well, I would like to welcome human beings with Paul and Demma, and they're going to show you how you can do that. Paul, you ready? Okay, welcome human beings. Hey, everybody. Wow, there are a lot of people here tonight. Uh, it's a great time to realize you get stage fright. Um, So my name is Paul, uh, over there we have Demma, Eddie, and Lena, uh, and we are human beings. So as a parent, uh, I'm, I'm a parent, and I'm also, I also run a small business, and, uh, I ex and being a busy parent, I expect my children to help me out at home by completing their chores. Uh, so, after uh, a long day at the office, I came home one day and discovered that none of them had done their chores. And of course, I'm upset, and I tell them, no TV tonight. And they go, why, man, why? And, uh, and I tell them, you know what, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Does everybody know what that means? Uh, it essentially means you don't get something for nothing. Um, so, after I told them, you know, you don't get something for a free lunch, I mean, you don't get, uh, sorry, there's no such thing as a free lunch. They start crying because uh, they're seven and they think they're going to starve. Um, so they start crying and because uh, they're seven and they don't, they don't, uh, they think they're going to starve. But you know what? Uh, so basically, you will show them how to easily it is to give your kids some chores. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> you never get the pay, huh? <laughs> As he said, it was, it was a very, very nice introduction to what we did in this past nine weeks. And uh, uh, basically, what we try to do is to install the kids the concept of how, the real life concept of how you have to earn your. Uh, privileges. So with this app, I can go into my dashboard and uh, basically see all my kids and what they're up to for today. If they're wasting their time watching TV, you know. So um, today I'm gonna, I guess, uh, show you the function of it now. And um, so instead of let's call them demo. <laughs> so, okay, Paul, Paul is good. This is me. Because <laughs> I'm doing Okay, uh, Paul did most of his charts today. That's good. But I'm at work. And uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, since I can't spend most of all day just looking after my kids, I can from work um, easily monitor what they're doing. So I can look from work, send them simple chores, and they can from home provide me with simple and answers whether they've done it or not. But it's uh, more visual, and uh, we can easily see whether they're lying or not. So uh, I'm going to add a task, and uh, I'm going to ask them to set a table for five. Maybe I'll have guests. And, um, since I can't, uh, I'm at work and I don't have my, um, I can't really have some pictures of how this task should be done, but uh, I can make it daily task, so he has to do it every day. 
So that's going to be his punishment. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, okay. She's going to go ahead and assign me the tax. <laughs> cool. So after that, uh, I should see it on my dashboard. I'm going to be demo now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and as you can see, my dashboard, uh, my playground is a lot more colorful and vibrant than uh, my dad's. Um, uh, and I thought I was done with my chores today. Um, so, it, and then, you know, my dad being mean, he assigned me another chore. Um, so, as you can see, uh, I, I need to set the table for five. Uh, so, I'll, I'll, I think I'll go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. One, two. That I broke another play. <laughs> Uh, you know what, uh, I did it the most part, like 90%, I think that's an A, uh, so I'll go ahead and write, uh, make a submission, uh, I'll uh, submit a photo uh, saying that I, or showing that I did it, uh, but you know, I broke the plate. That's, that's okay, I broke plates, they're cheap. Uh, and I'll let them know, because I don't want to get in trouble later, that I broke a plate. Uh, and I'll go ahead and take that, oh look, it's Pikachu. Uh, I forgot about Pikachu for a second. Uh, look, Pikachu's right there, he's waiting to be captured, but it's not quite ready because I didn't finish my task yet. So, uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and send that and see what he thinks. <coughs> so from work, where I'm just working, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I can now go onto my dashboard and see the submission that my kid made. And then from work, I can easily See my key broke a plate, which is we, have, we only have now four plates. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm gonna approve and say this was a job well done. <laughs> <laughs>
kind of this is, I, I don't want, well, I don't feel like you should punish your children. I mean, it shouldn't be a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Take it's away from it. know what to expect, like, oh, I broke three plates, now I can't watch TV for like three hours. Like, I say, like, three plates would be one. <laughs> so you know what to expect. Yeah, you can set, you can set your rewards, um, you know, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can change the levels of rewards. Um, so with, it's, it's not exactly like you know, like it's it's not a set amount. Like the whole idea behind this is you should instead of uh, your kids feeling like they they uh, are entitled to watch TV, they're entitled to play video games. Like it's it's their right. Um, they they earn it through uh, doing things that they're supposed to do. But in this case, chores. But as a parent, you can customize your yeah. rewards. That's what she's it's yeah. not set. That's right. <laughs> so I see the goals over there, like trip to theme park. What, what is that? PS4 Pro. <laughs> uh, these are the uh, long-term goals or like family goals they want to uh, set as the daily rewards and daily tasks are being completed. Mm -hmm. So. So, so in my little panic attack, um, I forgot to mention that there are long-term rewards. Uh, so when you accumulate, when you complete goals, you earn points. And once you earn enough points, you unlock uh, a long-term reward, um, which is, the, the value is also determined by the parent on I mean, a trip to Europe would cost less than a soda. I mean, you know. But you said it, right? You said like, Absolutely. oh, theme party is like, Two hundred points. So it depends on if I was playing the child or the parent, but yes, the parent says it. <laughs> sure. Um, do you consider like two-way contact? Like, basically, the kids maybe like request something, or like hey, the board someday, you know, like hey, I want to do something. But yes, they want to get something. Maybe so they like volunteer and do some sort of work. Do you consider like that or for uh, any can they do that? Uh, <coughs> future. Sorry. Future release? Yeah, uh, so, I mean, the kids can definitely request, I mean, if they want to do chores. Because they're not going to get something else. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. Like, it's just we don't get to build that into this. Uh, they can request for words, but they can request for chores, because that's weird. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. Like, what do you do when you go to a restaurant? You get it. <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> I mean, we didn't have so many people raising their hands. I, I'm sure there are many more people than that. No? Everyone can speak Japanese. Okay. Do you have any funny stories in restaurants? Like, where you order something and it's not at all what you expected? You can't think of it? Okay. My, my worst nightmare, okay, when I came to Japan, um, I, it took me some time to, to try not to, right? I absolutely hate that. <laughs> and, and when I tried it, I almost vomited, right? <laughs> and then the first thing I did, I think we're done, so you're not gonna hear the end of the story. <laughs> Okay, no, the thing I did is I really, really tried to recognize the kanji from Natto because I really hate that. Thank you very much. You guys ready? Awesome. Okay. So, 
Let me introduce Milu with Yuta. Yuta, you're on. Hey, everyone. Hey! I'm Yuta, and with me we have other three members. Uh, here are Ali and Kay. Uh, so yeah, Kay over there, and Raymond and me. And today I'm, I'm going to talk about a new way of ordering a food. So, if you want to order, if you want to enjoy your food, and if you are from overseas, I guess there's a common oh my god experience. It's like when you get into a restaurant and take a seat, and one of the staff came to you and they pass you the menu. Here, oh my god, they don't have any English menus, and what's worse, they don't have any menus with pictures. And the worst case scenario looks like this. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> to be honest, I ordered some old food last night. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, uh, I know there's one solution for this kind of problem. It's a translation. How many people have ever used translation application in this kind of situation? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's natural. So many people have them. But I want to say, Translation is good, but not good enough. I mean, it's not perfect. If you let me give you one example, I would say there's a one good uh, famous Japanese food named okonomiyaki. And it's a main dish. Uh, we use vegetables and some other else and the sauces. But the way you put okonomiyaki into, as a keyword into searching engine, it returns a pancake. Does this make sense? I don't think so. So here, our new application comes. We want to try to solve this problem, and we make it. So let me show you the example. And here, Ari and Raymond and me and a customer of a restaurant, and Kay is a guy of the staff of a restaurant. Yeah. Uh, so, so <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, this is a uh, menu. Oh, oh my god, like this. <laughs> you don't have any English letters and no visual images. And now it's time to use our application. Yeah, like this. Uh, this is exactly what I want to be. Uh, I want to enjoy local food as the guys uh, you can see here. Um, first of all, we have to take a picture, so would you like to take a picture of this menu? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> Give me a second. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Please take your time. Yeah, I think this is the hardest part of this presentation. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Yeah, let's use it. And since today, I think it takes a little time. Yeah. Maybe you can order a first beer, or maybe some of them can two or three more beers. But yeah, uh, since Alif can't drink because he was too he's too young, so yeah, let's say two beers and one tea or coffee. Oh, oh, <laughs> ah, yeah, this, that's easy. <laughs> that's easy to see. Ah, oh, we have. Ah, oh, there are lots of menus. Oh, there. Yeah, let's look through first and talk about what to order in here. Hmm, cool. And what? I wonder what does the question mark top light does? Ah, uh -huh. sure. Okay, I got it. So I tap to the image to order, and I have to tap the card icon button to confirm your order. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. Oh, Raymond, by the way, I know this one. Yeah, fatty tuna. Yeah, that's it. I know it. I love it. Yeah, this is it, this is it. Oh, I want to eat it, but <laughs> to be honest, I want I have to eat some more healthy one. It's yeah, literally fatty. Yeah, so let's get back to it. Yeah. Um, by the way, Lemon, uh, do you have anything that you might be interested in? Uh, let's go for seafood grill miso. Cool, seafood grill miso. Oh, I've never had that. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Oh, I've never had of it, but it looks nice. <coughs> Ah, oh, it seems to be egg or some seafood or cream on the shell, yeah? Ah, why not order it? Yeah. 
And yeah, Alif, do you want us to, to order? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's all it. But just one fatita. No two. I remember the fatita is at the. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, does anybody want to order something? Yeah? Crab shell. Crab shell, thanks. Yeah? Anything else? If you don't have any, yeah, since we are so hungry, uh, yeah. Natto. Natto? <laughs> natto? No, natto. Oh, let's see. No natto? No, natto. Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, but it was to ask uh, the staff here. So since we are so hungry, let's pick some other three or four meals. They are yeah, be beating uh, tallow and wild vegetable sofa. Beak kura, it says how much? Uh, it seems there's no information about prices that we, we have there. Yeah? How many? How many? Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's because why, uh, be, this is because I said you the translation is not perfect. Uh, accidentally, uh, we took something about how translation works. Yeah. Um, why not check the order list? Um, it's maybe the bottom card icon. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, they are the ones we want to order. This seems correct. And I've ordered all uh, fatty tuna, so let's leave it just one. And yeah, I know you two eat really much. Yeah, I want to keep some portion of myself, uh, especially the wild vegetable soba. It's ah uh, yeah, there. Let's order two. Raymond and Raymond and Arif, do you want something else to order more? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so we are ready to order, so yeah, uh, ex uh, excuse me, my friend. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, we can't speak Japanese, but he can read Japanese here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm so, so hungry. I can't wait. <laughs> And time flies, uh, we finish everything. <laughs> and Leon and Aris, I think it was a really nice dinner today. Uh, especially, yeah, I didn't have but uh, fatty tuna seems to be nice. Yeah. And I want to, fatty tuna, uh, I want to re remember fatty tuna so that I can order the next time. So, yeah, let's get back to the page. And yeah, Fatty Tuna was the last one, I think. Yeah? Let's add it to a favorite list. And one more thing. I, I don't remember very much, but what Raymond ordered was really, really nice. I want to remember. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> Buru Miso. Yeah, let's add it to the wish list then too. And finally, let's make sure those two meals are listed correctly. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so, yeah, today I can really enjoy the process of order itself. And I think I can order what I want, uh, what I think is the best in that restaurant. And also, I can remember the local food of overseas, so that next time I can try and or I can use it to find a new restaurant. Yeah, we have created this application so that everyone can eat uh, food like the local people do. And I'd like to say thank you uh, with my team first, and with uh, I want to say thank you to Wagon, and of course thank you for giving me a few moments on the stage. I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to answer any kind of question. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah. <clears throat> it's me again. Hi. Um, <laughs> in the uh, very first image you showed us that illustrated your problem, like all the kanji were overlapping, the yeah. characters were overlapping, it's kind of like a cup job, right? How does your application handle these situations? 
but I guess, how, does how does your application handle like the OCR in this situation? Like, yeah. what's the hit rate for reading a menu like this? I have basically the OCR. Uh, we are using APIs, and it seems to be it recognizes the letter first, and then the this they scale measure the distance, right. and if it's uh, closer than the selector, it connects other word. And in that way, yeah. Uh, have you tried it? Can you try it on this menu right now? Uh, no. yeah. I just want to see how yeah. it does. Yeah, but I'm sure, to be honest, it, the result is, yeah, right. not so good. So, so you require a pretty good written out menu? Uh, yes, so far, uh, the handwritten letters are really hard to recognize. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. You can do in a different language also or not? Uh, I'm sorry, a different... <coughs> can you do also in different uh, language or not? Yeah, uh, theoretically we can use it in 56 languages. Uh, but it's not our application, but it's because our OCR API can apply to 56 languages. <laughs> Get back to the previous ordered menu or something else. Yeah. Like when I go with a friend to eat something, right? And he wants to eat fatty tuna. Oh, yeah. And the next day he wants to eat fatty tuna again. So I was like, oh, you already ate fatty tuna yesterday. Just try something else, you know? So. <laughs> yes, the, we haven't implemented that kind of feature, but we discussed it and it, it's the next feature we can try. Yeah, I think. Cool. Thank you very much. That was me. Thank you. If you guys have more questions, you can always meet them at the end during networking, so don't be shy. Don't be shy. I run out of things to say completely. <laughs> so, yeah, that was funny, but like just the word itself, I don't think it's gonna be. Okay. Jeremy, you ready? Awesome, this is Canfair. Hello everyone, hey. my name is uh, Jeremy, and my team consists of Silvan, Yves, and Shirley on the computer there. Hello. <laughs> and we are Scanfair. We created Scanfair because we love traveling. And as much as possible, we love to travel all the time. But that's hard, because traveling is expensive. And flight prices are also expensive. So I really enjoy finding good deals and good bargains that give me more mileage for my money. So as a price-savvy traveler, I often come across the same three problems. First of all, there are so many different websites to choose from, even with the number of you know, Skyscanner, Expedia, and so on, it is still often a pain when it comes to looking for cheap deals. There's so many different combinations. Friday to Saturday, Friday to Sunday, this weekend, okay, next weekend is cheaper. Okay, why not the next weekend after that? There's so many combinations, it's a waste of time. Second of all, when you do find a good deal, how do you know it's actually a good deal? You know, it may sound very reasonable. 20,000 yen to go to Seoul. Okay, but what if I told you that the round trip price to Seoul often dips down to 15,000 or even 10,000, you know, 10,000 yen. Which goes to my third point, which is timing is very important. And pri flight prices fluctuate all the time. And discounts happen under your nose before you even know it. So. You don't even know, say for example, if a 50% discount is happening right now on Thai Airways, would you know that? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
But unless you're checking every single day and every single hour. But we're all very busy people and we all have better things to do. So do we have, you know, do we share some of these problems? Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. yes. Great, you are my type of people. And so that's why we created Scanfair, which basically attempts to address all these problems and uh, uh, by providing a seamless uh, flight booking experience uh, that would save you uh, time and more importantly money. It does this by allowing you to find and book flights at the right time. So are we ready to see it? Oh wait, I guess we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so instantly as we land on this page, uh, we see a bunch of different cities on the top, a lot of different destinations, and we are configured our current location at Tokyo. So these are all round trip uh, prices to all these destinations, and they're all sorted by price. So we see the cheapest on the left hand side, which is Seoul, and the cheapest flight right now, or cheapest trip right now, is 14,000 yen, which as you can see from the top there, there it is, there's a list of possible different uh, possible trips that you can take, and they are all sorted by price. The top one is actually, what it is, is actually the cheapest possible trip you can take to Seoul. There's no cheaper than this, you know? Right now, what is purchasable, purchasable right now is 14,000 yen. There's no cheaper than this. We know this because we crunched the numbers. We did all the possible combinations, more than 10,000 different combinations, and we've sorted them all by price, and we delivered to you the cream of the crop. The cheapest of the cheap, 14,400. There's no cheaper than this, right now. I'm not trying to sell you this, this flight. I'm trying to sell you this product. But if you are interested in this flight, you can go ahead and purchase that. So this is the cheapest flight right now that you can buy. Now, but, time. but as I said earlier, timing is very important. So our second problem is that we find a good deal that we like. But how do we know this is actually a good deal? So we solve that by accompanying each deal with a historical price graph. So we know all of these deals change over time. And we've been logging each of these flights by basically running scraping algorithms. Every hour, we're searching through all the different you know, airline prices, uh, all the different sites, updating prices, so you know exactly uh, the price right now, how good it is. So if we take the first example, um, it started off a bit mellow, around 17,000 yen, I think earlier last week when we started scraping. Uh, and then, for some reason, it went up, you know? I don't know why, I don't really, know how airlines price their flights, maybe someone spilled their coffee, but uh, <laughs> right now, you know, it seems like a pretty good deal. So, you might be thinking, okay, 14,000 yen, that's really cheap, but who has time to go on Thursday to Tuesdays? You know, we all have jobs, okay, maybe you. <laughs> we all have commitments during the weekdays, and so why not Let's look for a weekend flight. So if that is possible, let's filter for Friday flights. And let's go for the weekend, two days. So returning Sunday. So I think Seoul is the perfect destination for a weekend flight because it's so near Tokyo. Uh, go in, get as much you know, Korean barbecue or soju as you want, and then come right back. And we see that the price has been updated to 27,000 yen. And that is reasonable, uh, given that weekends are tend to be more popular. But it's not a bad deal. You know, 27,000 yen is more expensive, but as we see from the historical price chart, it's not a bad deal. In fact, it is 14% lower from the average. So I'm quite happy with that trip. It is leaving 21st of December to 21st, so two weeks from now, I think. Uh, I'm happy with this flight. Let's click view to see more details. What's happening right now is we're pinging all the different airline companies, all the different travel providers such as Skyscanner, Expedia, and so on, to bring you uh, all the latest uh, flights that you can purchase right now. And as we speak, it is refreshing, constantly refreshing, uh, looking for the cheapest possible flight. So just give it a few moments. I think you know the first one seems pretty, pretty good. 
the carrier is Jin Air, and it seems to be offered by Expedia. 24,000 yen. That seems quite reasonable. Do you guys think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we can go ahead and press buy now and we'll be redirected to the agent's website where we can continue our purchase. And if you've ever used uh, Skyscanner before, you'll be familiar with this page. And then, okay, so we're at Expedia.co uh, where we can continue our purchase. Okay, so would anybody like to uh, volunteer their credit card? <laughs> okay, but you get the idea. You can continue your purchase here. So, uh, let's go back to Scanfair, because we still have one final problem, and that's the third one, which is that deals come and go, whether you like it or not, and if you're not looking, you're gonna miss it. So, we implemented a feature for that, which we call price alerts. So with price alerts, we'll, you would get notified immediately whenever we found a great deal that fit your preferences. So, I'm in the mood to go to Taipei. Is anyone from Taiwan here? Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Great, okay. Sam? <laughs> let's let's uh, create a price alert for Taipei. And uh, yes, weekend flights. Uh, we do live in Japan after all. We don't take days off. <laughs> and uh, we'll, I only want to get notified if uh, the discount reaches 20%. Because that's how I know it's a good deal and I have to act fast. And I'm going to create that alert. Okay, now the alert is created and I'll be notified whenever uh, the price reaches there. And in Manage Alerts, we can see all the alerts that we've set before. And we can delete them if we don't like it. Uh, but we see, uh, we actually created one earlier today, uh, the same one. So we can showcase to you what it looks like when you receive a notification. So, I didn't check my inbox today, but let's take a look. Oh, cool! We found a new trip just for you. And, you know, by sheer coincidence, we found something that was, you know, exactly what I was looking for. It is 21% lower than usual. It is offered by Tiger Air Taiwan coming back on Scoot, and it's 24,000 yen. Super great. Let's click on this. And, We'll be redirected to the page earlier where we can find the live price and then continue our purchase there. And those are the main features that we'll be showcasing to you today. Um, of course, we have many more that we want to implement, but perhaps in a future release. Um, but even with it as it is that right now, I think it's delivering to you, uh, at least delivering to me, a lot of good value for money and also saves me a lot of time and I hope that it will do the same for you. And we've been working on this for the past two weeks, and uh, we've been working really hard, and we'll be, uh, we'll be super happy to hear all your thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Um, once again, my name is Jeremy. We have uh, Suvang, Yves, and Shirley. Uh, thank you for your time. I guess we do have some questions.
So I don't know about you, but I like how all these apps connect together. Like you can uh, uh, plan your trip and then uh, book a very, very cheap flight. And uh, when you get to Taipei, you can just use uh, the Miru to order some food. And uh, you can actually manage your kids uh, while you're <laughs> <laughs> So with all those apps, you can basically travel uh, nicely and without worrying about anything. Oh, there we are. <laughs> okay, uh, this is going to be our last demo. And Masa is going to join us very soon on stage to talk about Reserve Me. Masa, are you ready? Almost. Sorry, they all set up. I'm good. Okay, please welcome Masa for Reserve Me. I don't basically like to judge people by their looking, but the audience tonight is um, so diverse and a lot of international people. So I just want to ask one question. Have you ever guys um, asked your Japanese friends, saying like, can you reserve this restaurant for me? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I had actually one friend recently asked that favor for me. And then he kindly sent me a URL. So I was like, okay. And then I jumped to that URL. And then I see all the commercial about that restaurant. It was about like a mom, pop, super local Kyoto restaurant. Well, it's all in English, pretty cool. For the reservation, they said, call add this number. So I thought, maybe they're gonna answer in English too. And I just call it. But the things happened was, old Japanese lady answered it. So I feel like it's kind of nonsense for me because they're actually trying to attract more customers, especially outside Japan. But they cannot take a reservation unless they speak English. This is the beginning of our story. My name is Masashi. We are without me. We have two API specialists, Ken right over there, and Tom on the computer and Hugo as project manager, and myself as backend developer. What we basically do is to connect offline restaurants to online customers, keeping both sides customers, which are taking reservation by phone calling and book a seat at restaurant online. But how can we make this happen? Starting from the little setup for restaurant owners, if you are a restaurant owner, all you need to do is just a little simple two-step setups. Firstly, you're going to tell me your number. Secondly, you can copy a unique URL which we issue for you and then paste anywhere you want. So that will be like Google Map, Tabalog, or your own homepage. Right? From the perspective of customer, so let's say in this case, uh, there's a one restaurant rec uh, recommended by my friend. It's called Soba no Hara, and I found that information on the Facebook page of that one. See? And uh, there's a link on the top so that, I, so that I can jump to the URL. And I see you're gonna, you can take a reservation actually. So let's create a reservation for today. So um, for the day, I would say next Monday for 12, so that I can uh, have a lunch together with my friends. And you can actually refer opening hours of our uh, what about us, and you can go proceed. For the next day, I will tell them a little bit about myself. So my name, let's say Tom, phone number, I'll put my phone number, and I would say four people. And then this is a simple two step for Western customers. Anyone can do that in any language. Oh, sorry, it's English. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, from uh, any, whatever you're from. <laughs> and once you push the button of reserve, we can instantly call to the restaurant owner so that they can take a call and then get, get information about the restaurant. 
Like they, they every single day they use the zoom. So let's take a reservation. And uh, of course, it's going to be in Japanese. So you can refer it there for the English script, uh, description here. So let's make a call. Cool. And there should be a call for this thing. Cool. So restaurant owner is uh, standing around over there. So let's take a call. And there is going to be a little weird Japanese robot. Boy is gonna be coming pretty soon. Maybe I have a little slow Wi Fi. So he was an old lady, right? <laughs> Alright, so we will accept this respect in this quest, so let's push one. Alright, so we will get a SMS message pretty soon on my phone actually. There you go. Alright, we got SMS coming up here. And then say, oh, my request has been confirmed. Cool. But the thing is, it's gonna be easy if every single reservation goes like that. But you may have a friend saying like uh, he's gonna be a little late. And then you, put, and then you wanna update your request, right? Or you wanna cancel it. What you can do is just click this link and then update your actual request. So for the uh, time, instead of 12, let's say 2 p.m. So it's gonna be a 14 p.m. call. And we're gonna update. And then same things gonna happen to version owner. So they can get a call, and then they can choose either accept or reject. Cool. So this is our basic core journey. But I'm missing something. What if restaurant owner misses a phone call, right? Restaurant owner can actually check their SMS message, and then they can get information about request, and then call back to us again, telling whether if they would accept or reject that request. And if that restaurant owner has a laptop or um, mobile devices, we can actually refer a online dashboard just right over there. Oh, sorry. Connection is okay. So this is the optional case for restaurant owner, like online restaurant. Mm -hmm. All right. And then even from the dashboard, you can actually accept or reject the request coming from the customer. No, it's a TV that's not Ah, all right, cool. So, um, yeah, so actually, uh, you can see the dashboard, and there's a, there must be a update. <laughs> so there must be an updating request coming from the name called Tom. So you can, so, you accept? Can you accept this request? Yeah. Alright, cool. And then... And now we got a message again saying uh, request has been confirmed. Cool. Alright. So this is how we connect offline restaurants to online customers. Hoping that anyone can enjoy really good local food Japanese. Uh, local Japanese food no matter where they are from. So this is without me, phone call based reservation app for local restaurants in Japan. All the comments, questions, opinions are very, very welcome. Thank you so much.
yes. and then I want to update it. Uh, so I click on update, and then the like the restaurant it declines it. Like uh, it it cannot accept the update. Yeah. Does it cancel everything, or does it stay to the phone number? <coughs> stay to the. Uh, I mean, like if I order the first reservation was uh, let's say at twelve, and then I want to update to at two. Yeah. Uh, if the restaurant de uh, declines it, mm -hmm. does it cancel all reservations or stay at twelve? All right, so yeah, this is going to be that thing for a uh, Western customer for sure. And, but uh, honestly, that was a short period of time, so that we couldn't recover actually. But what we can do is, uh, instead of that, we actually going to... So if you rejected your update change by Western owner, we can send a, a link so that you can actually create a new request. Yeah. Let's hope in this response. Thank you. Um, Thank you for the presentation. I was just like interested in the how, like the technical side of the translation mm -hmm. that one. How did you? Ah, uh, alright. Yeah. So now we're covering the um, only Japanese language. So we connect API, and once new request. Uh, was created, we can instantly um, call that API and they can put the information about the request, you know, uh, name and phone number and uh, date and time, and they put inside of that message context, context and then so that robot can just read that message to the restaurant uh, owner. Restaurant was it like Google Translate? Which API was it? The code was really not bad at all. Yeah, so that was called Twilio. And they can actually cover uh, more than 50 languages, right? And yeah, and then we can technically cover all, all the languages so that like we can expand to not only just Japan, but like all other countries. Uh, two questions. Yeah. Uh, you using the SNS service, uh, is it using a free plan right now until you get a thousand calls or something like that? Uh, what are the costs for like those kinds of plans? If company were to use it, say they hundred thousand SMS messages a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the second question is, so if you call some like old bottom and top shop, and a lot of times like yeah, there's this message which just hangs up. Yeah, does it recall her back again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for for the first question, so in of uh, of course it takes a cost. So that like uh, we are thinking about charging a restaurant owner per observation, oh. yeah, so that they can cover and cover the API cost. And for the next question, so if she missed a phone call, we can um, actually send an SMM text, and that's what we can do for now. But uh, technically, we're capable of uh, leaving a message on that physical phone, putting the restaurant, so that they can pick up and then uh, the message uh, goes on and they will get an information about request so that after that they can call back to us and telling whether they would, would uh, reject or accept. And uh, for, the uh, for the installation, we will actually tell the restaurant owner how to use it. So I hope that yeah, that mom not gonna be confused about that robot phone call. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, real quick, as Sylvain mentioned, um, a lot of our students have been working really hard on their projects, so please feel free to speak with them afterwards about their projects if you have any more questions. A lot of them are still looking for jobs, so please speak with them afterwards. It's important to remember that they've been studying for nine weeks, but really, they've only started this project since last Monday, so it's less than two weeks. So they've done uh, great work. Let's give it up. Uh, before we wrap up, we just want to give uh, a bunch of thank yous to everybody, uh, the guys at Rakuten, and uh, forgiving us for the Skyscanner API and all these things. Uh, we have our speakers who have come to our events, um, also the amazing people at Impact Hub who have put up with us in our large group. Uh, we have our teachers, we have James, Forrest, and even Paul. Uh, we have our TAs who aren't here, Cassie and Ray, our TAs who are here, Hide and Alex in the back, so thank you very much to them.
actually have another demo day in two weeks in Kyoto. So if you find yourself in the Kansai area, come see us and check it out. Uh, and for those of you who are interested or want to know more about Le Wagon, we have another batch starting January 14th. So please come chat with us afterwards if you're interested in what's going on. Please uh, talk with us. So um, just uh, thank you so much from us. So just thank you one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you.